Hey everyone, and welcome to the first episode of my new series of Launchpad tutorials. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the Launchpad MK2. We're going to unbox it, see what's inside. Then we're going to prepare it for use with Ableton Live and the computer. So let's open it up. The first thing we see is this handbook. This is the Getting Started Guide from Novation. It contains instructions on how to connect your Launchpad and set up the software for it. Uh, it's a really good guide, I suggest you check it out. I'm not going to stick around too much on it because I'm going to be going over all of that in the video. Alright, so this is the launchpad. It has 64 square buttons. It's an 8x8 grid of buttons. Uh, these are the buttons you're going to be using for your sounds and light effects. While these side buttons control uh, how the launchpad behaves and how the software behaves. Uh, we also get this cable. This is a USB-A to USB-B cable. Our launchpad has the USB B port and this USB A and is going into the computer. So this is uh, the, the little card that contains the code for downloading Ableton Live 9 Lite. You're going to need this to get the software. It's, it's free software technically, but you need to have the license for it. They don't allow anyone to download it, but they package it with products like these. This is going to be enough for you uh, when you're starting out. We're gonna connect the USB B end here, like that. Now we're gonna connect this USB A end into the computer. All right, there we go. It's connected, and we get a, a nice startup animation. So when you connect it for the first time, it's rather dull. I'd say it's very boring. Well, now we're gonna set up the software and drivers for it, and get it to do something. So. First, download the Novation USB driver for the launchpad. This will allow it to uh, be used by multiple applications at the same time in case uh, you want to run additional software with it and it's less tedious. After you install that, you just got to reconnect your launchpad. So now it turns on again. And there you go, that's done. Uh, then you want to get the uh, firmware update for the launchpad app game too. This will ensure your Launchpad MQ2 is running the latest uh, firmware, which is the small piece of software that runs directly on the Launchpad MQ2. So we go ahead and update it. It says update in progress. There we go. Our Launchpad goes into bootloader mode and it begins updating. The update is really quick. And now that we've updated, the Launchpad restarts. So I want to go over bootloader mode a little bit. You can hold these four buttons, session, user one, user two, and mixer. If you hold them and then connect your launchpad, your launchpad will boot into bootloader. Okay, so what these do, uh, this top row of orange buttons, uh, these assign an ID to your launchpad MQ2. So in case you have multiple, uh, you want to set the ID to a different value for your other launchpads. This is useful because if you don't do that, then they appear as the same device to your computer. Uh, these here can control the channel that your lights are displayed on. Uh, th this will be important later, but for now, you don't have to mess around with that at all. And these bottom buttons display your current firmware and bootloader versions. So now we are running 171, which is the latest updated version. And this here button will exit the bootloader. Now our Launchpad MK2 is fully functional. All right, now we have to uh, get Ableton Live Lite. So how do we get Live 9 Lite? Uh, we downloaded it from Ableton's website. Now this is gonna take a while, so I'm just gonna sit here and wait. Okay, our download is finished, and now we have the setup inside of the zip archive. We open that up, and now our installer will load. All right, accept the uh, agreement terms. And now this is the pod you wanna install Ableton at. Uh, I do not advise changing this path because usually you want Ableton on your SSD in case you have an SSD so it runs smooth and fast. Change the path if you're low on disk space on the default drive but in case you're not I would not touch this at all. And now we just give it a couple minutes uh, for the installation to finish and we're good. Alright once the installer is finished we can now launch Ableton Live 9 Lite. So the first thing we're asked is to take a moment to authorize our software. You want to authorize with Ableton.com. So you need to create an Ableton account in order to punch in your code. That's on the back of this uh, little sheet of paper. I've already made an account and punched my code in. 
once you log into your account, uh, the web browser will attempt to communicate with live. You want to allow this, and then you will have successfully authorized. Now Ableton will set up the core library. These are the samples and devices that come with Ableton Live. And now in your first launch, you're greeted with a demo live set. You can play around this. Uh, it's more or less just a demonstration of how you can make a song in Ableton Live because Ableton Live is software that's meant for music production and you can do a lot of stuff with it. So you can play around this if you want. It's cool because you can learn about how Ableton works and whatnot, but I won't be going over it right now. So let's make a new live set. Live sets are your project files. So that's what you use to create stuff. So right now our launchpad doesn't seem to do anything. So we need to set our launchpad up. Have a look at the preferences on the link MIDI page. So this is where you want to set up your MIDI controllers. So first we want to tell Ableton we have a Launchpad MK2 connected and its input and output ports are called to Launchpad MK2 to Launchpad MK2. All right, we can already see some lights are now displaying and we can access stuff. Uh, but in order to get full functionality, we need to enable these switches. The Microsoft GS Wavetable Synth is a synthesizer included in Windows. It's useless and you don't want to use it. You just want to ignore it. So this is the uh, buttons you want turned on. Uh, these will allow the launchpad to communicate with Ableton's tracks and change its parameters. I'll also go over setting up your audio device. Uh, for starters, you want uh, MMA slash DirectX. This is the driver type you want to be using. You don't want to use a mic uh, for launchpadding that just adds input latency. However, if you want to record something, I suggest you uh, take your mic as input and then turn it off since you're done. You want to set the output device to your speakers. And then about this buffer size, you want to basically play around with it. You want to get this as low as possible. The, the time it takes from when you press a button until the uh, button press is registered by Ableton. So you want to set this as low as of a value as possible while your audio still sounds okay. So I'm going to load a audio file. So right now my audio is not very fine. I'll just set this one to loop like this so I can... All right, so our audio doesn't sound very beautiful. So we want to up the sample rate until it sounds good. And then just keep making it smaller. But it still sounds okay. Yeah, this va this value is going to be okay. I'll, I'll still on this. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, in the next episode, I'm going to go over tracks, how data works between the launch pad and the computer, and some devices that you can use to start making your launch pad do uh, noises, uh, sounds, and light effects. Uh, if you have any questions about this, uh, write to me in the comments. I'll try to answer everything, and I'll see you next time. Bye.